It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us, we had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven, we were all going direct to the other way. Hello fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today I have this classic book with me to review to you guys. A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens himself, author of The Christmas Carol and Oliver Twist. And well, let's get right on to it. First of all, you probably heard the intro. That is the first several lines of this masterful classic masterpiece. And... You probably knew about it. I didn't read this book, and I re and I already knew about that reference, mostly because it's so famous and it pops up everywhere, even in other works of literature that we particularly enjoy. And well, yeah, and it's a pretty good introduction for this book. This book is about Mr. Charles Darnay. It starts with him and a shoemaker who seems to who doesn't talk, who just works on a shoe. And he is super absent-minded and pretty much mentally insane. Then Lucy Manette comes into the picture. Lucy Manette is a beautiful young English woman. Charles Darnay is a French. And our dear Lucy Manette finds out that the old mentally diseased shoemaker is actually her father. And with her nursing and spending time with her father, finally mentally cured her father. And then, Charles Darnay again. Charles Darnay returns to France, and then he's there accused of being an English spy. Where, and where he is revealed that he is a loyal citizen to France, and he is released after a trial. There he falls in love with Lucy Manette, and basically marries her. And her father heartily approves, because Charles Darnay is an old family friend, and very, very good man as he knew it. And then, in the middle of the book, we find out that there was a tyrant named Marquis. He is mon monsieur. I, I don't know how to say it because it's French, and Fr French is usually fancy, and I can't really say it. And it's actually really, like, weird because there's this, there's this Marquis, and... He is a tyrant, basically. He taxes people, he takes people's money, kicks them, and, with a, and carries around a sword, and acts all royal and mighty, and he doesn't really care about the common people. And he is Charles Darnay's uncle. And Charles Darnay's like, nope, I'm not having this. I can feel something rising. I can feel that like, the common people is getting angry with our family. I will change my name, and I will move to England and teach French there. So he leaves and goes away with Sidney Carton, an old family servant. Then, yeah, he runs away, basically. And then, uh, even more interesting, Charles Darnay, and then Charles Darnay has a child, and he's living happily ever after in France, but then something bad happens. You know what it is. The French Revolution. The peasants rose against the royals, Killed the nobles and people with too much money and took who took too much too much taxes. And many, many, many people were killed. Some were innocent, some were most definitely deserved that death, but we cannot judge that from just this bug. And even from all the other historical points of view, we don't know if that particular royal was a good person or not. And then Charles Darnay. He, after the French, he, because of the French Revolution, Charles Darnay is like, My family, this is not a good place to stay. Since we do have a form in England, because, you know, Lucy Manette is an English woman, they moved from France to England, from Paris to London. And they go to London and they live there for a little bit. And then, another new thing. Sidney Carton, I have mentioned him. He looks very, very, very similar to Charles Darnay and Darnay, and he is an interesting person. He's a little bit drunk and he's usually um not that not that good of a person. He hasn't really done lots of good in his entire entire life. And that and it seems that he's on trial and he's captured and 
since Charles Dernay in New Sydney, Carnantine decided that he needed to help him. So he ran from England to France yet again, and he did what he had to do. But when he went, apparently since he was an immigrant, he was well illegal and therefore must be executed. And he was captured, put into trial, and then but he was released thanks to Dr. Manette, who was super influential there. Then they they literally just res just got him out of trial. He was well rearrested, and then the trial began. And the trial in the trial we are revealed, and everyone public is revealed that Charles Darnay's uncle and father were directly responsible for Doctor Minutes Doctor Minutes little mental disease. And they were tyrants who had, who had basically driven Dr. Man mad, and therefore his son, their son, were a, were were to be were to be killed. So Charles Darnay knew nothing of this, and we when he found out, he was super duper shocked. And then he really knew that there was nothing to be done because people were super hyped about getting him, you know, killed and strewn upon the streets. So. At that point, he knew that he could do nothing, so he just waited on his cell for his death from the guillotine, or whatever that's called. The yeah, gull. I don't know how to pronounce French, guys. It's not my fault. And then another twist. Sidney Carton, as I have said, he looks incredibly similar to Charles Darnay. He loves Lucy Manette too. So what he does is that for Lucy Manette, for Lucy, from from his deepest love. He goes in and exchanges himself with the prisoner, who is Charles Darnay, the main character. And Sidney Carton goes in there and exchanges himself and gets himself killed in the Gulletin, executed cruelly. And he is, he basically saves Charles Darnay's life. And that's how it ends. Of course, there are some details that I did not just say in this little summary. Such as Mar Madame Defarge and and his her, her and she was super like super like abused by that time with Marquis, the uncle and father of Charles Dernay. And so he base she basically has a personal grudge against the name Marquis, therefore Charles Dernay. So she's another major annoyance and villain. Of course it's not her fault. I mean, it is definitely first of all, the Charles father an uncle, too bad for him, they're bad people, but he is a generally good person, so that's where the problem starts. Family feuds, it sucks. And what I think about this book, um, I mean, it was an incredibly complicated plot. There were so many things working at once, so many little details, and so many little scenes, and so many different characters doing different things, and they would all come together at the end of the book, but if you have missed a little detail in the front, you would be later really, really confused in the end of the book. So, I'd say try to read every single little detail, but since for a book like this, it's literally impossible, I would say try your best. And it is not like a super go-to page turner, it wasn't for me at least. It was though a very complex plot, and maybe that's something that threw me off, because I wasn't that used to Charles Dickens' super complicated plots. And I read The Christmas Carol no problem, all of the twist wasn't bad either. Well, it was bad, check out my review, but um, yeah. I definitely would say that I didn't hate it, I didn't super duper love it, I wasn't hyped for it or anything, but I would say that it's a book worth reading and you might learn a thing or two about the French Revolution. To be honest with you, it's just all the same. Peasants were abused, and therefore they got mad, therefore they got mad at the novels and the novels died. You know, history all over again. And it is an, a pretty good book. Something that you might read if you have nothing to do on a lazy Sunday afternoon. And it's a good book in general. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. Well, as I said, it isn't a page turner, is it? It isn't something that you might choose um, from a round of YouTube or something. But. It might be something that you might want to read because it would probably come rushing in your middle grade, middle school exams. Just saying, it might. Yeah, I predict my future.